Hey Minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and today, as we close out January, I want to talk about Smash Up in 2020, because the plans are set for 2019. I wanted to reserve at least one video slot for some things I wanted to talk about myself, and there will still be more viewer request videos in the coming weeks. There were a lot of requests about drafting, delving further into base drafting, and custom factions, and those are coming, but I wanted to take time to do them properly. Also, I wanted to talk about this specific topic sooner rather than later, and that is the future of the game. Still, I want to thank everyone who was a part of Viewer Request Month. We're going to have to do this again because it was a lot of fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. But for this video, I'll be talking about Smash Up's future, specifically the logistical aspects, my idea for the next expansion, and some philosophical considerations for the direction of the game. I want to start by saying that I have no advanced knowledge of plans for 2020, and if I did, I wouldn't be able to share them. Crank It Up does not claim to have any influence or authority whatsoever. This is my suggestion, not even a speculation. To my knowledge, the game is still going strong, and there are a few milestones I'd like to see it hit. Eventually, the game will have to end, but I think 10 years and 100 factions is certainly reasonable. I know how many are being added in 2019, and the 10 year mark at 2022 is not far off. I myself have several factions that show there is still design space left to mine, so I'm confident that it can be done if all parties, including us the players, are willing. If it ends before then, I will personally spearhead a grassroots campaign to get that reversed. I got Season 3 of Young Justice to air after 5 years of campaigning, so never underestimate my persistence. By the way, it's totally worth the wait, even though the DC streaming service is terrible and overpriced. Let's start with some logistical predictions. I do not think there will be another big geeky box. It's hard to imagine a box that is bigger without it becoming a logistical nightmare. It's hard enough carrying around the bigger geekier box as it is now. I have friends with games that come in larger boxes, and they almost never travel with them, often because of the weight. I also think we don't need it, although I'm not basing this on the presence of sleeves. As far as power counters, after the release of the fall expansion World Tour Part 2, there will be two more spaces for power counters. I'd actually like to see them stop being produced, as it's getting excessive. They aren't needed, they drive up the cost, and there are reasons why they are already included, but it's unnecessary. Next, I want to talk about what I think should be in the next expansion, following the 2019 World Tour. I am intentionally not going to discuss specific cards, because that will decrease the chance that this expansion actually happens. No one wants to copy fully fleshed out ideas. But I wanted to mention the expansion idea, because I feel so strongly that it should happen, so I'll talk about it at a high level. Given the number of fans asking for a Christmas faction, I think the next expansion should be a holiday theme expansion, which I'm calling Holiday Hijinks. Now, there are some issues that may make this complicated. Some holidays do not have international appeal or recognition, but I think that is okay, as previous archetypes haven't been an issue and we literally just finished the world tour, so I think it's okay to put the focus back on the US for an expansion. Also, you want to be sure not to offend anyone who may not celebrate a particular holiday, but I believe there is a way to do it and still honor Smash Up zaniness. And finally, they have to be new and interesting ideas, preferably with no added mechanics. So for holiday hijinks, I suggest the following four holidays. Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, and Independence Day. I am specifically avoiding Thanksgiving because I don't know what to do with it without reaching into the darker part of the holiday, and I really like the opportunities that the other four provide. When I think about designing custom factions, I often look for card mechanics that are largely unexplored or haven't been seen in a while. And I think of the fairies with their ore mechanic, as it's not exclusive to them, yet ore rarely appears more than once per faction, if at all. When you think of Halloween, you inevitably think of the phrase, trick or treat. And I think that this is perfect for a Halloween faction, cards based on a choice. There are tricks, and there are treats. Tricks are bad for your opponent, treats are good for you. 
which will you choose? However, I think it would be interesting for your opponent to choose that explicitly. One of the problems with the fairies is that the choices are largely meaningless. The Halloween faction would make the choices more interesting, especially if you're not the one making them. Imagine a card like this. Each other player chooses an effect. Either they discard a random card, or you draw a card. I don't know if this would work without fleshing the cards, but I think it would be interesting to consider making the opponent decide before they knew the effect. Maybe not for all cards, but for a subset. It reminds me of Truth or Dare. You had to weigh the possibility of what came after before making your choice. I could see this being too harsh, but at least it's worth considering. I think this could be handled as a special ability as far as rules go. I also think that this is a great way to bring back Madness, perhaps a new type of Madness card, and the ability to create a hybrid deck of Madness would be really interesting. Madness is the perfect type of trick that you wouldn't want to take. For the Christmas faction, it's hard not to think of elves because of their role in Christmas, and it's a reminder that the idea of helping others is pretty untapped. The Christmas faction could revisit this concept. I had originally wanted to play with the idea of naughty or nice, but that seemed like too much overlap with Halloween's trick or treat. I also thought about a reactionary faction. It would have punished players who were naughty and rewarded players who were nice but there really weren't many mechanisms for being nice outside of the elves. So instead, what if the faction had to be nice? I think the Christmas faction should give out presents, and Smash Up has its own form of presents in treasures. We have factions that draw treasure cards, but not ones that give them away. The Christmas faction can have your opponents draw treasure cards, or play treasures on minions to gain rewards. Given that not all treasures are good, I think this could be a chance to be secretly naughty. I think it would be a great way to bring back treasures, which, in keeping with the Halloween theme, is a way of reincorporating older mechanics in a new way. Unfortunately, I can't talk too much about the Valentine's Day faction because it builds upon concepts used by a faction that hasn't been released yet, but I wanted to mention a few high-level ideas to get people thinking about where this faction could go. Naturally, this is an opportunity to revisit the idea of control. We have done taking control and giving control, but we haven't really explored the idea of changing control between players, not necessarily including yourself. A common Valentine's Day trope is that Cupid fires an arrow and hits a random, often incorrect target. I think this could be a fun concept to explore, where a random minion changes control, and not necessarily in your favor. I also like the idea of wooing minions with tokens of affection, something I've often wanted to explore. I do have an outline for another faction that does this, but I've long been intrigued with the idea of giving a player power counters in order to steal their minions, and I think there is a way to make this work as a sub-theme of Valentine's Day. For Independence Day, when I think of the American Revolution, the phrase, no taxation without representation comes to mind, and I think this is a fantastic opportunity to explore in Smash Up. We've barely explored the idea of players not being on bases, or incentivizing players to win bases by themselves. I could see two main goals for this faction. Making sure opponents are not on bases when they score, thus declaring their independence, and receiving compensation when they themselves do not score on bases, thus fulfilling the phrase, no taxation without representation. Breaking a base by yourself usually requires a player to be inefficient, but encouraging that playstyle could be really good. This could also have implications for multiplayer, because third place as a core concept has rarely mattered. It would be hard to incentivize a player to give up second place, but making a distinction for third place, or the fact that you only received one VP, is very interesting. Now let's talk about my philosophy for Smash Up going forward. I realize I did a video not that long ago about how Smash Up hasn't been favoring new players lately, but at this stage in its life, I think more focus should be on taking risks with the design and catering to those loyal to the game. Each Smash Up expansion assumes that the game is played in isolation, and the truth is that adding a dependency or two wouldn't crush the game. I think we need to stop treating expansions as two-player standalone games, because that is not going to be a way to introduce the game. This is why each expansion comes with its own power counters, so that it is truly standalone and you have everything you need to play a two-player game. 
In search of new ideas, I think it's going to be harder to keep complexity low, and the core set remains the best way to teach the game. So I think AEG should accept that expansions are expansions, not necessarily the first purchase they're going to make. No matter how great an expansion is, it's going to be hard for me to deviate from my current expansion purchasing order because it makes the game easier to learn. Finally, I want to talk about the event kit for 2020. If they do one, it would be the fourth year, even though 2019 hasn't seen its event kit yet. I honestly foresee the same problems happening this year as past years, and it's going to be incredibly upsetting. This year's kit will be another faction. I completely empathize with fans who are unable to have access to the kits, and chasing promos is easily my least favorite part of the industry. I have both attended and hosted these types of events, and they are fun, but they either need a timetable for releasing the material in the AEG store, or focus on content that is ultimately unnecessary for the game. Yes, I'm a completionist, but I could live without the playmats, even though I have them. I actually don't have the upgraded tokens, and I'm completely okay with that. Focus on non-functional, ultimately missable items that players would like to have, but be okay without. Playmats, trophies, figurines, not actual game material. The All-Stars were eventually released in another mechanism, but the approach was unsatisfying for many, as you had to buy a bigger box than you may have needed. I don't pretend to understand all the decisions that go into the structure of the event kits, but I know that fans hate it. Let me point this out. In Crank It Up's life, I have been asked twice about how to obtain the sheep, which are available in the AEG store. For the Titans and All-Stars, I've lost count of how many times I've been asked that. The event kits can be a way to raise the game's profile, but if not done carefully, it can alienate fans in the process. I'd like to see that process improved in favor of the fans. So those are my hopes for 2020. Will any of those things happen? Only time will tell. But the great thing about Smash Up is that there is a real community around the game, a community that has helped keep the game alive and relevant in an oversaturated industry. So I encourage you to share your hopes and wishes for 2020 and let Crank It Up be a part of making that happen. But before then, we have to live out 2019 and it's going to be a great year from Crank It Up. There are so many things I'm excited about, you don't want to even know just how many ideas I have for this game. What would you like to see for Smash Up in 2020? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, let's shut it down.